Okay, we're back here live in Las Vegas. This is the Cube. We're here at IBM's Information on Demand Conference, the hashtag IBM IOD. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. This is the Cube. Our next guest is Dave Laverty, Vice President, Big Data Analytics, overseeing the go-to-market strategy, the, the marketing around the portfolio. Uh, welcome to the Cube. Great, thanks. Um, so me. two big mega trends happening. <laughs> Big data and analytics and social business on the other, both kind of go hand in hand. We're going to hear a lot of that here at the conference, but big data and analytics obviously driving everything. Um, how do you get your arms around that? And explain to the folks, is, okay, internally, you now have to communicate to customers right. who are looking for business outcomes fast right. and they need help doing it. So it's, you need some educational, but yet they need kind of they solutions do. right away. They, they do, John. I, I think, you know, that the one thing that we're seeing is it's really, it, it, they don't, uh, clients don't see this as two separate things. They really see, you know, there's a data element to it, analytic element, but really what they're after is the combination of both, which comes together in terms of what are the insight they can draw from it? How can they change their businesses? Uh, how can they, you know, really drive um, new initiatives based on this in terms of the insight that they can get in terms of the, the data in their organization? We've, uh, this is our second year here at IOD, last year we are here, and we saw, we saw the coming together of IBM internally, just kind of messaging and kind of realizing, hey, we have, the whole future is kind of the new modern era of, uh, of computing and software, kind of these, as they say, waves of innovation creates new value and new ways. You guys have all the pieces, so what, was, what we saw was, hey, we have all the pieces. This year it's much more coherent in the messaging. You, you're in that conversation because you're in, in across that. What is the secret internally to, to bring that happen, and what, what does it take to kind of bring those together? Because you guys have so many businesses and so much technology. We do, but I, I think it really um, connects back to what are we trying to do as an organization? What is IBM trying to achieve? And, and we've picked really four major growth initiatives that we see for IBM, from cloud, mobile, social, social business, and big data and analytics. And there are also, you know, big initiatives going on in the market, too. Uh, we know, you know, through some of the analyst firms, they've estimated that uh, the big data and analytics market is a $212 billion market. And we've positioned ourselves to achieve roughly $20 billion by 2015. So it's a, it's a pretty big, audacious goal. Uh, we're definitely on track. We've seen double-digit growth in this market over the past couple of years. So... It's something we're encouraged about, and you know, this conference is all about this topic, and what we're seeing more and more. And you know, our theme for this this year's conference is really about you know how do you um, win big? How do you think about this in terms of how it can change your business? And we have hundreds and hundreds of customers who are presenting their use cases here to talk about how are they getting value out of their investments in big data and analytics. Uh, and very much uh, that we're seeing now, many organizations are telling us it's, it's no longer sort of down in the organization as a conversation. It's a boardroom level conversation. It's a CEO conversation because they see it as a way to drive competitive advantage uh, within their industry. Uh, they see it as a way to generate new revenue opportunities in, in their industries where, you know, the whole notion of monetizing data is uh, starting to take hold. So it's an exciting time, it really Dave, is. Dave, I wonder if you talk a little bit more about that market, 200 billion, um, so obviously huge. It's more than just Hadoop. I mean, when you look at the pure, more. pure play Hadoop guys, you're talking about you know tens of millions of dollars being done. Maybe if you throw in some of the visualization and, and other you know log analysis vendors, maybe it's a couple hundred million here, a couple hundred million. You're talking right. 200 billion, that's, a, that's right. enormous. So what's in that 200 billion? Well, obviously it's, uh, good combination, a, a good representation of software that you need to do these things, you know, in terms of thinking of thinking of structured data that has to come into the equation, the unstructured side of the data where, you know, Hadoop plays a fairly big role in that. Really what's sort of at the forefront on the software side now is this whole notion of data in motion. You know, and there's sort of a theory out there that says, you know, at some point we're generating so much data that it sort of collapses under its own weight. And, you know, what's the next paradigm shift that we're going to see move toward? It's really this notion of data in motion. And how do you start applying and bringing analytics closer to the data and to do this in a real-time fashion so that you're actually streaming information and you're driving analytics and predictive analytics based on those streams of information. So that's a big part of that 200 billion that, that we're headed toward. The other key piece of it is really the services dimension to this because organizations today don't necessarily have all the skills they need uh, and, and are looking for help and looking for insight 
really you know, on the business side to understand how they can be driving to uh, be the best within their industry and understand what are the best practices and what are their competition and competitors doing uh, that they need to be doing so they don't fall behind. That's probably one of the biggest concerns we see from clients today is I don't want to fall behind. I don't want to be you know, um, behind the scene of this. I need to be at the forefront. So John, let's see, maybe two weeks ago now, two or three weeks ago, you did that uh, great panel with Jeffrey Immelt, the CEO of, uh, of GE. Yep. So GE, it's this machine data is really what sort of the, they're pushing. What's your play there? Obviously, Smarter Planet, you know, is, right. you know talks to that, right. but the GE, huge customer of IBM's. Right. You guys becoming increasingly competitors or cooperators? Or, at any rate, where does, where does that fit into the whole marketplace, that, that machine to machine? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a big part of it. It's, it's one of the things we've uh, announced today in terms of uh, an offering that we have just in terms of how you start to look at uh, machine data, network data. In fact, we had uh, one of our clients, uh, Consolidated Communications, on uh, a panel with us today talking about how they're using it more effectively, monitoring uh, machine data in network operations uh, to really spot trends before things start to happen and issues start to develop. Uh, and really to improve overall customer satisfaction because they're doing it. Uh, one of the things IBM's doing, uh, we have many, many situations where we're using streaming data in the medical field as we start to take streams of information coming from uh, bedside monitors and how we start to bring that information together and almost create sort of the early warning system uh, for patient care to understand when things are starting to either go wrong or alarms are starting to happen uh, and, and Physicians can then intervene at an earlier stage. You know, uh, a very popular use case we talk about quite often is uh, in in the situation of uh, childcare with uh, the University of Ontario for uh, Hospital for Sick Children in the neonatal care unit, where we actually were monitoring uh, information from many many different devices prior to this sort of thing. You know, devices or alarms would go off, nurses would go over every once in an hour or so and check on the baby's condition. Uh, now, with streaming analytics, essentially what happens is, is they know uh, ahead of time if something changes, if something radical starts to change in that streaming level of information, uh, they can predict with a certain degree of accuracy uh, if the uh, child is starting to see some duress or if uh, there's an onset of infection starting to take place. And they can predict this you know, days before it actually takes place or happen, and they can begin the treatment sooner. Do you see the... Um that machine data, the instrumentation of virtually everything, machines, people, right. um, coming together uh, with the traditional IT departments. Is that happening today in, in your world? Are there examples of no, that? Very, very much so. I mean, it, it, when you think about the application of all this, it, it really, and what we're seeing, uh, it's, it's both machine data, but it's also um, in, in the area of customer, what uh, people are trying to do today to get to a higher level of personalization. So how do you take all this, these different types of, of data coming together and try and really sort of predict what's the next behavior? Uh, and how do you start to delight customers uh, based on the information you have at hand and what you know and how you can better serve them? So there's a lot of hype around big data, but 200 billion sounds like it's more than just, just hype. What's your take on the no, whole big it, data meme? It, I mean, it's real. It is definitely real. As I mentioned before, you know, you've got this desire from a very senior level, from, from really board of director level to CEO saying, how do we monetize information? We're seeing it in the telco business. It's almost a race now where uh, tel telecommunications companies are figuring ways to monetize that data, location data, and use it in a, a number of different applications. Uh, when we see uh, how clients are starting to use this, it sort of falls into a number of different categories. One, it's around uh, customer, how do, how do organizations uh, acquire, grow, and retain customers is a, a big piece of where we see big data and analytics coming together and being applied today. Another is around um, operations uh, and optimizing operations and fraud uh, and security is another big, big uh, application of this data. Uh, we start to see that in you, you know commercial accounts, but also in the public sector when you think about uh, what's happening to fight, it, how data is being used to fight crime, how it's being used to conserve energy. Uh, there's just so many applications today of how that information is starting to be used, and we've, we've got a number of situations and cases where we see this come together. You guys also talk about uh, enabling new business models. That's one, exactly. you know, one, of, your, one of your big in, in initiatives and imperatives. 
do you, but, the but, the but uh, question is, but do you see companies actually organizing to be, you know, so-called data-driven? It's kind of a cliche, but, but if in fact data is the new source of competitive advantage, are, or, are companies you know, really taking that seriously? I know some are, but across the board, um, and what do they have to do to really exploit that yeah. momentum? I mean, very much so. We see organizations today starting to organize around this. I mean, one of the key indicators is uh, the creation of the chief data officer, uh, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, becoming a very popular term. And, We're and laughing because we talk about it a lot on theCUBE. I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's a critical it, role. But it is. Please. But it there's is a lot a of questions on role. how to roll that out. Yeah. Some are afraid of being restricting innovation because if, yeah. if it comes more like uh, compliance security blanket right. or organic innovation. Is it an IT function? Is yeah. it outside so the CIO's where does purview? It, but it's a very but, unique, but please give us your it's, perspective. It's a very unique role. And yeah. you know, the, the uh, people that I've talked to that are in that role, they are really, or see the, their role as a facilitator to really understand the value of the data that the organization has and how do you use it more effectively to put it in the hands of all the decision makers, but yet also uh, maintain the governance over that information because it is an asset and it has to be protected. Uh, you have to think about the usage of it in terms of, you know, if you're dealing with personal data, who's protecting it because the reputation of the firm uh, is at stake if that data were to fall into the wrong hands. So it's, it's very much so becoming a, a, a very real world. In fact, I saw one stat that said, you know, today probably 5% of organizations have a uh, chief data officer growing to 50% of organizations having it by 2015. So you think about that rapid acceleration of organizations seeing we need that kind of stewardship over this information because it, it is now more than ever being seen as an asset to an organization. So we did a, a conference in July with uh, MIT and it was a chief data officer symposium. We had the <clears throat> chief data officer of uh, the Veterans Administration, TD Ameritrade, uh, the Federal Reserve, a number of, of CDOs. Every single one of them said that the CDO, CDO should not report to, this, to, this, to the CIO. Now, when we got out of that environment, that very insulated MIT sort right. of environment, academic, but, but still some practitioners, there was a, a backlash of, a, of, of that notion that it shouldn't be reporting to the CIO, or maybe others said it's the CIO's job to be the, the chief data officer. Yeah. What do you think about that? Well, I, I, let me take it home to my own situation. So I think, you know, I've been in marketing a long time, and it's always been a debate. You know, who should own the customer data? <laughs> should it be marketing? Should it be, uh, the, you know, the IT organization? And I think really where I've seen that play out the best, it's a collaboration between the two you know, in terms of, of where it needs to But the real design. time has changed that equation a bit recently from conversations we've had here in theCUBE is saying hey, we're seeing the business units driving a lot more activity, exactly. whether that's application driven, <laughs> which is integrated in the app, that's right. dictated by the business unit or the marketing departments. Sure. Are you seeing the same thing and how do, how do people figure that out? Because yeah, that's, that's the challenge, you want speed. Y right. You do. You want speed, and that's that's one of the keys to this, right? Because it's it's all about ultimately, it's all about how do you use the the data more effectively, either to grow the business or to improve decision making. Uh, and it, you know, there is a, a strong technical side to this. I mean, to to really think about how to do this, what we're seeing is organizations need to think about a new architecture. How do you architect for the future? And it's really IT that has to play a key role in that. When you think of uh, what organizations are dealing with today. It's thinking about all the variety of information that they have to bring into the, the organization. How does that data get aligned with enterprise, existing enterprise data? So you start to take uh, social feeds and unstructured information. How do you align that with a customer record? So you know how to associate the two and, and you know, what information do you now have uh, that you've gathered on that customer? It's really that integration of that data coming together that's an important thing. So it, it becomes an IT function to really make this effective. I want to change gears for a second because um, you know we really are um, complimentary of you, your marketing. You guys do a good job. It's a tough story to Thank tell. You. you got a lot of assets to do. And plus, IBM has always been a great marketer, uh, going back to its history. Uh, you do social well too. You have a good handle on social. So, so how do you? There's a lot of folks that are trying to be, <laughs> trying to get that to be that good. What do you say to the folks out there? What's the strategy? Because you have very complex message that you need to simplify on that's relevant. Right. Um, multiple technologies involved, right. many use cases that are delivering business outcomes, so do you feature the customers? What's the overall marketing strategy? More awareness? I mean, how do you, what's the secret in terms yeah, of Yeah, I mean, at IBM it's no secret. I mean, we started this probably five years ago now with our, the whole notion of a smarter planet. 
and the things that we could do and that we saw, the things that were changing in the business. Uh, and when you think about how do we do that effectively and how do we get that message out, it, it really comes at a number of levels. It's thinking about um, thought leadership and it's, it's working with other thought leaders who really are sort of the trusted advisors to our clients. Uh, and working with them to understand their perspective and to have them understand our perspective on our point of view. And we you know, take a lot of stride to really think hard about and develop our point of view and how we want to establish that in the markets where we do business. So how do we get that consistency globally to speak with one voice around a specific topic? And it is about keeping it simple. That's probably the, the best advice I could give to other marketers when you're thinking about how do you take uh, so much a level of complexity, bring it together into a concise message, build a point of view uh, that really can be substantiated in the market, uh, and that you have uh, great references and great customer t participation. Well, a lot of people, a lot story. of people don't know that IBM has a real social DNA. I remember 2005, the guy who was running corporate communications. Uh, Get what his executive was name was. He's now in a different group, but he was showing me that you guys had all hands meetings, company wide online, internally on IBM. You had the blogging, employees I, are blogging. So you guys know social down to, I mean, this is not like Johnny Come Lately. We're in the I'm, business. You know, it's not Johnny Come Lately social media. So what is the secret to social media? Because that, that's more challenging. You have omnidirectional channels of opportunity and with right. customers and potential customers, feedback to and from. Uh, how do you guys look at the social uh, marketing uh, initiatives? What, what, one, of the, one of the key things that we really try very hard to do, and that is align our subject matter experts. Because for the most part, what people want to engage in is really good conversations with knowledgeable people on topics. So we do a lot to engage people throughout our organization to make them socially aware, to understand you know, what are the conversations that are happening, are they jumping on those conversations that are happening uh, in a live way to make sure that we are getting our point of view uh, into those conversations? So uh, it's it's a, it's but a key part. But not dictating, of it. right? I mean, but it's no, not dictating. No, it's really um, you know. I mean, people use their their own opinions, but we do uh, training. So we do train people on how to be more social. Uh, we do a lot of our own uh, company level training. Uh, we we started an initiative uh, within the organization uh, called. Think Fridays, and once a month we pick a topic, and we train uh, 450,000 employees on that topic, and a lot of it is built uh, in in the conversations uh, connect and keep us uh, moving using our own tools, using um, uh, connections to make sure that we keep those conversations. And the management alive. also gets executive management gets feedback from the employees in real time too, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We uh, we know. Uh, what they like and what they don't like in terms of what we're saying and, and how that gets communicated. And the social piece is interesting because, as you're saying before, IBM does a really good job being disciplined with the higher level messaging that evokes emotion. And, you know, Smarter Planet's a great example of that. And I, yeah. I can give you a great example. One, one, uh, one thing we did about, it was about a month ago, we, we decided we had a new ad campaign hitting. So I said, well, let's blog about it and we'll show some of these ads. Well, you can't imagine. The, the response. <laughs> People have a very emotional reaction to like designing a website. Advertising. Love it or hate it. <laughs> when, or, or, exactly. Uh, when, when you're asking their opinion on advertising. So uh, all of a sudden, our whole social channel lit up with all kinds of opinions, good and bad. But it was what was great about it is feedback. it was instant feedback. <laughs> right. yeah, instant yeah. feedback on well, the old you know, what was The expression is listen to listen. You know, I remember improve. back in the day, you know, I was, you know, back in the 80s when I graduated college, it was like, you know, the marketing I taught you in business school was, you know, listen to the customer. You know, it was kind of like, yeah, everyone right. said, listen to the customer. And, you know, back then you would, like, write it down and bring it back to the to ranch. Right? It, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think they said this. Now yeah. you can actually listen to the customer Absolutely. in real time. Yeah, one of my favorite yeah. expressions is... Uh, my team, you know, hears us all the time. We have to think from the outside in, right? Because yeah. we're such a large organization, it's very easy to kind of get caught up on what we think is the right point of view. We need to listen to our customers and bring that conversation in. So another thread that you guys are good at is open source, right? And IBM has a history of, uh, of being successful in open source. And, and getting back to your social marketing, I want to get your thoughts on this because this has kind of not been d unpacked publicly in, in, the, in the mainstream market is that the open source community of developers has always been transparent and projects win or lose based on collaborative and communities have been a big part of marketing right. projects. Now the end user market seems to be com community driven. Mm -hmm. With Twitter data, you guys are demonstrating some great social data up there. You can now talk to, to, the, to what's on people's minds in real time. 
and essentially the, the theme has been, the meme has been kicked around, is that it's community marketing on steroids. Right. Um, do you agree with that? And if so, how do you, how do you shift a you know, traditionally big TV campaign-driven approach and continue that kind of you know, high-level messaging and then go into kind of these many channels? Yeah, it's, you know, it's really, it's become more than ever a mix of everything, right, in terms of the audiences you need to appeal to, uh, where you need to appear, where you need to be a part of these conversations. Uh, you know, more and more of our demand generation activity is starting to come through uh, social channels. And, you know, our, our thought around that is really how do we connect people to uh, high-quality content, educational content, in terms of them being able to see us as a, a trusted source of good information uh, to educate themselves on certain topics. So that's really where we've you know, sort of come together to be able to marry the world of, of social and the world of marketing sort of come together. It's really through uh, the creation of, of very sort of thought-provoking content. Well, Have you guys had any like uh, internal conversations that said, hey, we want to trend on Twitter, like if everyone just tweeted at once, you know, just send out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how many people? Uh, pretty I'm much not sure every, we've tried that. Pretty, yet. Much, everyone, like pretty much everyone. Pretty much everyone. Looking tweet. at my team here, saying, <laughs> I, think everyone, uh, let's I, think try I think everyone tweets at IBM. Pretty much, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. People we are do. encouraged to be uh, on Twitter. We do. You know. We do. Yeah. yeah. We, Just gave we, them an evil idea, but uh, no, I'm only kidding, by the way. But, but your it, idea, it, not it mine. Would, it would work. Think and socialize Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> Social innovation, right there. Uh, <laughs> We're very ethical at IBM. I don't think we would do that. We know other companies that do that. We'll leave that for our competition. They knew. Who they are too. Um, <laughs> we do. <laughs> okay, back to big data. Revealing so we, your secrets over here. <laughs> oh, we have, we have. Yeah, I'm 20 something people. That's a big trending <laughs> item. We have crowd chats though. We've got how many? Uh, 82 posts so far on crowd chats. 100, 102 posts so far on uh, crowd chat, uh, which is actually kind of a tweet right. tweet machine. Um, and we're into the collaboration on the analytics side. That's been a challenge on social. So, wh what do you guys look at that from from an analytics standpoint? getting the visualization and the dashboard, because everyone's chasing the ROI equation on with analytics driving it. That's, right. that's, that's, that's on people's mind. What's your thoughts with that? In terms of marketing, specifically? Yeah, marketing, or? turning it into customer feedback. Yeah. Is there any visualization tools? How do you guys use your own big data to? I, I mean, we have a number of, of tools that we use today, a number of our own products, and we really try and sort of practice what we preach and using our own technology uh, as best we can to uh, enable um, and drive our organization to, you know, look at, at uh, are we being effective? Are the things that we're doing matter? Are the conversations and the topics that we're uh, very passionate about, are we starting to see that come through? So, um, and again, you know, we're, we're very much an analytically driven company all the way through and through in terms of uh, every aspect of IBM now is, is very much uh, focused on uh, becoming an analytically driven uh, company. My final question for you is, um, you know, looking at the marketplace, you know, the, the big data analytics marketplace, kind of looking over the portfolio of solutions, you're talking to customers. Um, what are the biggest things that surprised you over the past couple of years um, that, that kind of like, wow, I, I didn't think it would be that big or, or I didn't think that, I thought that would be bigger. Is there yeah. anything you could share in, in areas that surprised you and then areas that didn't surprise you? Well, I think, I think the one that surprised me the most is the interest level and excitement level around this topic, around big data, has not died down. Not uh, from what we've seen. Everyone, you know, sort of said, well, it's going to be a passing fad, and it's going to be the kind of thing that, you know, we'll, yeah, we saw we'll this see it go through the hype cycle, and, you know, it's, it's going to revert back to a BI conversation. Well, you know, it's uh, uh, two years later, uh, since this thing is really heated up, it's still as strong and it's still, if anything, it's gotten even um, hotter in terms of a topic. Uh, I know, you know, some major publications have actually established beat reporters just associated with big data. So, you know, they, they really are <laughs> three years after we did it. This. <laughs> no, four years. Actually, four years Take so. a bow, guys. Take a bow. <laughs> We're the first tech blog or any publication to have cloud mobile and social uh, editorial uh, strategy. No, I think, I, I think we'd agree. Um, Final question to kind of give you the last word here. Um, for the folks watching who aren't here, um, what's IOD about this year? I mean, you know, IBM's uh, messaging, and what's the core thing that you would want for someone to take away from the event this week? Yeah, I mean, this, this is a really great conference because it's extremely focused, and the people who attend this are very passionate about uh, this topic, about big data analytics, 
Uh, we really let our customers be the voice of this. As I mentioned, you know, we've got many, many, many sessions, but uh, half the sessions are being uh, conducted by our customers because they want to share their stories. And other customers want to hear those best practices come together. So it's, it's really, uh, uh, you know, you'll get the feel of the buzz just walking around the hallways here of the stories people are sharing and, and the excitement around this topic. It's we, had, we had an amazing interview this morning with Tim Buckman, amazing customer story, um, just the kind of passion, because it's game changing, people feel it. Right. And, and it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Dave, thanks Exciting so much. Exciting times. Exciting times. Dave Leverty, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest live here in Las Vegas. IBM's information on demand, very focused conversation. Customers are doing the talking. But we want to interview the IBM executives as well. This is a big part of the, of the trending stories of social business meets analytics and cloud mobile under the hood. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Cube is a live mobile studio and we bring it to events and we say we extract the signal from the noise. What we do is we get the absolute best guests that are at those events, we bring them inside the Cube and we talk to them, we have a conversation. We really want to make it fun, exciting, but more importantly, extract the data from the guests and extract that metadata and share it with the world so people can use that information to better themselves, better their companies, more importantly, connect with other people to do more business, to define more about the technology, and for us, this is the future. Uh, I watch many of the uh, the Cube interviews when you're handling other events. Oh, good. And uh, you know, it's both the combination of enjoyable and insightful. And it, you know, what I like is the uh, interactive banter back and forth. Plus the fact that uh, you know, when I think about some of the conversations we have, they're not only deep, they're not only rich, but the audience themselves will really come to benefit from those conversations. When organizations bring the Cube to an event, it just brings a whole new dimension. It adds a texture of not only independence, but also explodes content from their community into a much, much broader community. We tend to reach about 10 times the audience that's live at an event. So we're a big data-driven organization. Um, we have a data science team that allows us to see not only what's uh, trending broadly uh, with the public, but what's tre trending in very specific areas in our specialty in tech. Uh, that allows us to vector our analysis and, and relevance uh, from our research and journalist team into everything that we do as a media company. And really the benefit of theCUBE is a place for conversations for people to connect with each other and, and to learn about things. And uh, it's a revolution in, in media. We look at the technology and the people behind it as tech athletes. Those are the folks making the companies, making the technology, really creating the new value in this modern era. And it's fun, it's exciting and more importantly, it's very social. The Cube does an excellent job of taking a very, very, this very, very broad platform and format and giving visibility to a very broad audience on each of the different uh, key aspects of the technology, and it's a, it's a great environment for the, the broader community who couldn't be here today, have visibility into what we're doing, what each of the tracks are, and what are the sort of the core trends that are associated inside of Hadoop and given a very balanced view from multiple dimensions around it. And I think that's invaluable for the community. We always know that your view is right until you hear a different perspective. So you're always interested in give me some neutral perspective, help me see it from a different uh, light, right? And maybe ask a hard question or two that I might not have considered. But, you know, in that sense, right, that independent right, uh, uh, voice, that uh, always ability to Right, have uh, you know, sort of in independent, audited sort of perspective right, of the world. It's always just good. So these guys bring an incredible uh, wealth of knowledge from their own careers. They've been into a lot of different things in the industry, and uh, they're independent. You know, they're able to bring different points of view, and you know, sometimes they ask really tough questions too. The kinds of questions that maybe you don't want to answer, and so, uh, but it always gets to the heart of it, and we just love having them here. It's about connecting with people. And that really is what it's all about, having the conversations in a very social, collaborative way. And that's what makes it so exciting, and people are watching. I think it's extremely valuable, also, the, the independent parts, right? So they're, so they're not biased by having a, uh, a sponsored kind of relationship for the specific segment. So that there is no, it essentially leads to a kind of more of an unbiased conversation. And also leads to like kind of like the no questions were left unasked. Any question can be asked because I'm not gonna ask you the question that might look you bad or might make you look good. The value of an independent news organization at an event 
is that it allows our audience to have a perspective that's balanced, that it's not just you know the vendors talking